Birth of a Legend George Herman, Babe Ruth Jr., began his Major League Baseball career as a pitcher with the Boston Red Sox in 1914. The 19-year-old Southpaw quickly became one of the best hurlers in the game. In 1915, he won 18 games. The next year, he won 23. In 1917, Ruth notched a career-high 24 victories. The Red Sox became a great team. They won the World Series in 1915, 1916, and 1918. But Ruth was also an amazing hitter. In 1919, he hit an astounding 29 home runs, breaking a record that was set in 1884. But in 1920, Harry Frazee, the owner of the Red Sox, needed money for his other businesses. He sold Ruth's contract to the New York Yankees. Ruth became a full-time outfielder for the Yanks. In his first year with the Yankees, Ruth crushed 54 home runs. In 1921, he stunned the baseball world by belting 59 round trippers. Every season after that, Ruth tried to top his home run mark. You gonna break the record this year, babe? I sure will, fellas. I promise. I've got to do it. The kids are counting on me. But the years passed, and it didn't happen. Would he ever do it? The chase is on. By 1927, Ruth still hadn't broken his record, but he had become the most famous man in America. Babe loved being in the limelight. He appeared in movies and advertisements. Newspapers across the country reported Ruth's every move. Americans couldn't get enough of their favorite slugger. In March 1927, Ruth signed a contract with Yankee owner Jacob Rupert. Babe would get $70,000 a year to continue playing for the Yanks. Babe, you're the highest paid player in baseball. We're counting on you to help us win some championships. That's what I'm here for, Mr. Rupert. When the 1927 season began, the pressure to break the record of 59 home runs was greater than ever. Do you think you can do it, babe? I may not ever break the 1921 record. I get more bad pitches to hit than any other player. Despite Ruth's doubts about setting a new record, no one doubted that the 1927 Yankees were a great team. The hard-hitting Yankee lineup had been nicknamed Murderer's Row. Earl Combs, Babe Ruth, Bob Musil, Lou Gehrig, Tony Lazeri, Mark Koenig, Joe Dugan. Powerful first baseman Lou Gehrig was a key member of Murderer's Row. Gehrig had joined the Yanks in 1923 and showed lots of promise. In 1925, he belted 20 homers. In 1926, he hit 16. Gehrig would have one of his best seasons in 1927. So would Ruth. The Yankees opened the 1927 season against the Philadelphia Athletics at Yankee Stadium. Ruth didn't wait long to begin his quest for the home run record. On April 15th, in the fourth game of the series, Ruth smashed his first home run of the season. Ruth kept pounding the long ball throughout April and May. On May 31st, against the Athletics, he whacked homer number 15 in the first game of a doubleheader. Ruth then crushed number 16 in the second game. The ball soared completely out of the stadium. Amazingly, it cleared a two-story house across the street. In front of 30,000 fans at Yankee Stadium on June 11th, Ruth walloped home run number 19. The blast cleared the fence in straightaway center field. It landed just in front of the huge scoreboard. The ball traveled so far that Cleveland Indians catcher Luke Sewell suspected foul play. Let me see that club. Nobody could hit one like that without having a slug of lead or something in the end of his bat. Sewell didn't find anything wrong with Ruth's bat. 
two innings later, Ruth pounded his 20th homer. His teammate, Lou Gehrig, had 14 home runs on the season. Ruth wasn't the only one chasing history in America that spring. In May, Charles Lindbergh became the first person to fly an airplane solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Parades and celebrations were held in his honor everywhere. I wonder what's holding up the start of the game. I think they're waiting for Lindbergh to get here. Lindbergh had been invited to Yankee Stadium to attend a June 16th game against the St. Louis Browns. But by game time, he had not shown up. The umpires decided to delay the game until Lindbergh arrived. Meanwhile, in the Yankee dugout, I feel a homer coming. My left ear itches. That's a sure sign. After waiting 30 minutes, the umpires finally ordered to start the game without Lindbergh. In the first inning, Ruth slammed home run number 22 into the bleachers. After the game, Ruth met with reporters. That was some shot, babe. I had been saving that homer for Lindbergh. I held back as long as I could. When you get one of those things in your system, it's bound to come out. Meanwhile, Gehrig chased Ruth for the home run lead. On June 29th, against the Boston Red Sox in Fenway Park, Gehrig slammed a round tripper to finally catch Ruth. They were tied at 24 homers each. Ruth had never had competition like this before. The home run race seesawed back and forth throughout July. But on July 28th, at home against the St. Louis Browns, Ruth struck again. He crushed his 34th homer. It put him one ahead of Gehrig. The excitement about the home run race between Ruth and Gehrig was building. Yankee manager Miller Huggins talked to the press about his two star sluggers. How would you compare their swings, coach? The babe swings with a free motion of his wrists, and the swing comes from right out of his powerful shoulders. Lou, on the other hand, hits with a rigid wrist. He's in a position to get more direct power from his drives. The differences in the slugger's hitting styles resulted in different kinds of home runs. Ruth often hit towering, soaring arcs. Gehrig usually smacked hard line drives. On August 16th, Ruth proved that no pitcher or ballpark could contain him. At Comiskey Park in Chicago, he launched a monster home run completely out of the huge stadium. At the end of the game, more than 5,000 young fans poured onto the field to congratulate Ruth. It was his 37th homer. Gehrig had 38. You Chicago fans are all right in my book. The home run race between the two teammates continued through August. By the end of the month, Ruth led Gehrig 43-41. With only 28 games remaining in the season, Ruth needed 17 homers to break his record. Time was running out. Ruth and Gehrig were tied at 44 home runs as they entered the September 6th doubleheader at Boston's Fenway Park. In the fifth inning of the first game, Gehrig drilled his 45th round tripper. In the sixth inning, Ruth hit one. Then Ruth added his 46th homer in the seventh. In the second game, Ruth blasted another homer. He now led Gehrig 47-45. The New York Times reported, For the moment, at least, the master home run swatter of the age still is George Herman Ruth. But Ruth wasn't finished roughing up Red Sox pitching. On September 7th, he slammed two more bombs for numbers 48 and 49. Ruth's five homers in two days knocked Gehrig out of the home run race. Gehrig would hit only two more homers the rest of the year. Now Ruth had the stage all to himself. Way to go, babe. Now you've got 21 games to hit 11 homers. Could he do it? 
As the month rolled on, Ruth continued to hit the long ball. By September 22nd, he had 55 homers when he took the field against the Detroit Tigers at Yankee Stadium. In the bottom of the ninth inning, the Yanks were down by one run. But with no one out and a man on first base, Ruth took care of business. In one mammoth swing, he crushed home run number 56 deep into the right field bleachers. As Ruth went into his home run trot, Babe! Babe! Give me your bat! Get off the field, kid. Let go of it, babe! Let go! Get off my bat, son! I gotta get off the field before this kid gets hurt. Whoa! whoa. L let go, babe! For the last time, kid, let go of my bat! The New York Times reported, The youngster was like the tail of a flying comet holding onto the bat for dear life. The afternoon ended with lots of laughs. Ruth now had only six games to hit four homers. Can he do it? Ruth failed to put one in the seats in the next two games against Detroit. But on September 27th, he found his stroke against the Philadelphia Athletics. In the bottom of the sixth inning, he smashed a grand slam against pitcher Lefty Grove. It was Ruth's 57th homer of the year. He had only three games left to hit three homers. On September 29th, Ruth continued to swing a hot bat. At home against the Washington Senators, he launched his 58th home run in the first inning. Then, in the fifth inning, he crushed number 59 to tie his 1921 record. Ruth had two games left to top that record. The next day, the Yankees faced Washington's Tom Zachary. The lefty kept the Yanks' bats at bay. After seven and a half innings, the score was knotted at 2-2. Leading off the bottom of the eighth inning, Yankee shortstop Mark Koenig ripped a shot deep into the outfield. Koenig sped around the bases and safely pulled into third with a long triple. Ruth was up next. He carried one of his favorite bats, which he called Beautiful Bella. Ruth had already faced Zachary three times in the game. He walked and singled twice. During the season, Ruth had hit two homers off Zachary. The pitcher was determined not to give up another one. Zachary's first pitch was a blazing fastball. Strike one. Zachary threw Ruth another fastball. High. Ball one. Ruth carefully dug in for the next pitch. Zachary stared in for a sign from the Senator's catcher. Curveball. Ruth waited for Zachary's next offering and tensed for the pitch. On the 1-1 one -one count, the Senator pitcher hurled the ball low and inside. Ruth pounced on it. The three men stood frozen, following the flight of Ruth's vicious blast. Stay fair! Stay fair! Fair ball! Hoo-ha! The crowd erupted in wild celebration. Yankee Stadium shook from the thunderous pounding of stomping feet. The New York Times reported, The bat connected with a crash that was audible in all parts of the stand. Number 60 was some homer, a fitting wallop to top the Babe's record of 59 in 1921. The only unhappy person at Yankee Stadium was Tom Zachary. It was a foul ball! A foul ball! The ball was fair. Get ready to pitch to the next batter. While the crowd cheered and the Yankee players roared their greetings, the Babe made his triumphant almost regal tour of the paths, said the New York Times. Even Yankee third base coach Charlie O'Leary joined in the celebration. What do you think about that, Charlie? Woohoo! Many years later, one writer said, 
George Herman Ruth did more than just smack 60 home runs in 1927. He achieved a Ruthian feat. And with it, Babe Ruth achieved a place in both baseball and American history.